My next guest here in the UEG TV studio is another top abstract of our D. It's Dr. Iva Lundbey Boave. Almost right. correct? Yes. <laughs> you are from the famous Karolinska Institute, uh, Medical University Sweden. And welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much. You investigated the cancer risk in primary sclerosing cholangitis. And what you find was an increased risk for several cancers like uh, hepatobiliary cancer, colon cancer and pancreatic cancer and maybe even more. Uh, I looked it up and just briefly in your paper and for example the hazard ratio for hepatobiliary cancer was 117 and for pancreatic cancer it was still 6.6 .6. so that's quite significant isn't it? Yes it is. Tell us a little bit more about your research. Um, well, if you want to know about the numbers more specifically, um, or... Yeah, and how you carry out your, your research, yes. what you found out. Well, um, this is epidemiology studies, of course, so they're register-based, and um, Sweden has um, a long history of, of uh, very well-founded uh, registries that, that are national, um, and uh, they have full coverage. So it's based on diagnosis codes, um, mm -hmm. mainly from the cancer registry. And um, I mean, the high incidence of, of hepatobiliary cancers has been well confirmed in other studies. Mm -hmm. I mean, the numbers differ, of course, a little bit mm -hmm. uh, between different studies. And we've looked upon um, the cancer risk as the first cancer risk in our study. So, so we, we've excluded the patients after first cancer. And of mm -hmm. course, some patients have more than one. And how many patients did you uh, include in th this register uh, study? Well, from the beginning, we had a little more than 1,700 patients, but then we, um, some patients were excluded due to, um, we had a very strict criteria for the PSC diagnosis, both by, by scrutinizing medical records, but then also um, uh, we required that the diagnose code <clears throat> would be um, in the registries twice at different times mm -hmm. to be sure that they had the right diagnosis. Yeah. What uh, implications do you think will your results of the study have for patients uh, in terms of screening and, and treatment, of course? Well, um, we know that cancer risk is, is, uh, has a great impact in, in patients with PSC quality of life. And this is something that, of course, worries a lot of our patients. Um, so we, we also find it's necessary to fill this, this gap of, mm. of, of, of knowledge in this unusual disease. Um, I mean, the cancer risk of, of hepatobiliary cancer and colorectal cancer is, is confirmed, so that's, that's no news. Uh, pancreatic cancer and the other cancer forms where we found an increased risk in our cohort uh, are very rare cancers, so even though the risk is increased in these patients, it's still, um, the risk is still very small. So, mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, of screening, I think um, that, I mean, it's too early to say, of course. You wouldn't at advocate the, screening in these no, patients? No, uh, no, I don't think that would be cost efficient. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think it's important to, to have an awareness of that this disease there, there could be a vulnerability for other diseases or cancers than those that we already know. So, yeah. um, more of having, having uh, in mind when you see these patients and perhaps when you, chose, when you choose uh, medi medical um, strategies for them as well, according to immunosuppressants and so right. forth. If you don't mind, I would like to add uh, just a question about you as a person, as a researcher. Yes. Uh, when did you decide to commence a career in the medical field, in gastroenterology in particular? Um, <laughs> I would say it was a little bit by chance. I, I was in between always jobs. Always a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I've always been very interested in the, in the kind of bowel area. Um, and, um, well, I was in between jobs and, and I applied for, for two jobs and I got both and I, I picked gastroenterology and um, mainly I would say I like to work with gastroenterology because uh, as, an, as a specialty in internal medicine you see a lot of young patients still um, compared to other in internal medicine specialties and um, 
um, it's it's nice to be able to help people who are in their in their um, like the center of their age, uh, having families and and um, proceeding with their careers, um, and um, um, according to research, I almost just started research um, like a year ago. And um, um, I think mainly I wanted to begin um, research because I think it will make me a better clinician. I mean, I'm interested in the scientific part as well, of course, but so I you're think... you're still doing both? Yes, I'm doing both. Um, so, um, um, yeah, to, to, to give me a bigger depth of, of what I'm, how I'm treating my patients and how I talk to my patients about their risks and so forth. So you... Uh, we're always keen to jump into the scientific arena or was being a general practitioner for example uh, an alternative another uh, option for you um, no I've never really thought about that actually I think it's too difficult they have too many areas <laughs> yeah, to cover yeah. right right <laughs> so I'd rather general go into practitioners one. Yeah. will like that what he's just said yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey. Uh, it's, it's not so easy to express your name, but I, I, will, I will try it and I will uh, rehearse it. But thank you very much for being here. Congratulations again and enjoy your time here in Barcelona. Thank Greetings you. Greetings to Sweden. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.